So I've just bought myself a 10 gallon aquarium. Uh, the reason I've done this is I spend quite a bit of time online talking to people who think, uh, have some doubts about the shape of the earth. And uh, a lot of the times they make observations of uh, distant cities or mountains or things like that. Uh, for example, they'll look at a, a city like uh, Toronto uh, <coughs> across the lake. And they'll see perhaps more of it, or perhaps less of it, than they expect. Now the reason, of course, is refraction. Uh, when light travels through the atmosphere, because the atmosphere is of varying density, then the light can get bent down, it can get bent up, and this can cause more or less of uh, the distance seen to be uh, uh, observed. Now, but people don't really like this explanation, because it seems a bit like you know, hand-waving or refraction. So I thought a good thing would be to do uh, a practical experiment. So I bought this cheap fish tank, came from uh, Walmart, has one of Amazon, I think it was about ooh, $20, $25. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up with water. And water is a lot thicker than the atmosphere, obviously. Uh, so when uh, a light passes through it, it gets bent more. Now what I'm going to do is take this picture of uh, Chicago and I'm going to stick it on this end of the fish tank. I'll just tape it there for now. Might have to adjust it later. Uh, I'm going to take some water, I'm going to fill it up, I'm going to see what it looks like from the other end. So we're going to be looking down here and seeing what we can see of Chicago. Now I've got this bit of curved metal which I'm going to use to represent the curve of the Earth. Now again, we're exaggerating things a lot more here because we want to uh, you know, actually be able to see things on a small scale which normally only exists on a large scale. And you might have also noticed I've got some sugar. What I'm going to do with this is, first of all, I'm going to fill in the uh, tank with water and I'm going to look through this end and see what we can see of uh, Chicago over our simulated ground here. Uh, I'm also going to take this uh, laser pointer, which I just uh, also just got, and shine that through the tank, and we'll be able to see the uh, the beam uh, of light bend. Now, the bend of a beam of a laser light is going to be the same as the bend of visible light going one way or the other. It doesn't matter which direction it's going. So you'll be able to see the light bend, and I'm also going to show you what you can see from this end. So first of all, I'm going to do it without sugar. Then I'm going to add sugar. Now, when you add sugar, what you do you fill the tank with water, then you pour sugar in so it lays in the bottom. The sugar at the bottom starts to dissolve, and that makes the refractive index, the density, essentially the optical density of the water will be higher, lower down, and light bends towards a more dense medium, uh, which is what normally happens uh, in the atmosphere because the air is denser lower down. So you should see the light curve downwards. And we should, looking at this end, see more of Chicago from uh, this end. So let's see what happens. So what do we see here? Uh, we see the same view of uh, Toronto that we saw before. It is magnified, of course, but uh, it's not distorted in any way. The, the image is exactly the same, it's just uh, bigger because we're looking through the water. So I've got about six gallons of water in here, and I'm going to add around about five pounds, I think, of sugar. One thing I didn't take into account was that it was very, very cold in my garage, so it took a really, really long time for the sugar to dissolve, and I ended up moving the fish tank inside. Five, five, five pounds of sugar. So what I ended up doing was uh, removing some of the water and just lowering this curve a little bit because it was a little bit too much for my knees. Uh, but what actually happened was uh, it worked. The water dissolved the sugar and we get a bending laser beam. Now, it's just most obvious if I kind of point this laser beam upwards a bit and then move the beam down, 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 down and you'll see as we get to the bottom here, it bends over at the uh, far right hand side. And that means if we're looking up in this direction, if you had a camera here, which I'll put in, in there in a second, well, uh, the line of sight from the camera will go up, over and down, which means it will go over 
this obstruction here. If you see, I send this light beam out and it actually bends down right over the other side. It actually goes over this little lump of metal I have here, which I uh, used to raise the obstruction because I flattened it a bit too much. And it comes over the other side. So what can we see at the other end? Well, at the other end of the tank I have a picture of Toronto, not Chicago. And the interesting thing that happens is when I move the camera down, so it would normally be obscured by this curve and this block here, instead of being obscured, the uh, distant image of Toronto actually seems to get compressed and rise up in the air. All the way down. And you can see it's being compressed. Up again, it's back to normal. Go down, it's compressed. So what's happening is the beams of light are bending over. So the beams from here, from the image of uh, Toronto, are bending up and over and back down into the camera. Now, if you look at this laser, when it's just going all the way over, you'll see at the other end, it's actually, if I can hold it steady, it's actually spreading out, which kind of indicates what's going on. That means a larger portion of this image comes back over here into the camera and creates a small version, which is why we get this compression. See, we have it normal there, and then we come down lower, it gets compressed. It's compressed because the beams are kind of being pulled in together. Another thing people often do is stand on one side of a lake with a laser beam and shine it across the lake, then stand on the other side and get all surprised when they can see it, because they think it would be hidden by the curve of the lake. But of course what's going on is exactly the same thing as this uh, image compression. The light is simply being bent around by refraction. Here I'm simulating a laser at the shoreline by shining a laser at the image from behind. You can see that even when we bring the camera all the way down to the bottom of the tank, you can still see the laser because the light is being bent around by refraction. You can see what's happening here because of the image compression, which is why it's a good idea to do this type of test during the daytime and not at night. So these physical experiments are great, but another way of looking at uh, this issue is to use this simulation that I wrote. This is uh, simulating uh, atmospheric refraction through a range of uh, conditions. And uh, you can see the uh, conditions here, which is basically the temperature gradient. And you can see by moving it around, you can make it uh, hotter or colder higher up, or you can make the uh, lower air colder or the lower air hotter and you can see what uh, what effect it has on the uh, the distance seen here you can see i'm making the the lower lower air hotter and it's creating this kind of uh, mirage like you would see on a road uh, i've got a number of presets and one of them is the sugar aquarium preset preset and i've tried to make it as close as possible to what we're seeing uh, in the aquarium uh, this is the temperature curve it starts out here at uh, 12 and a half degrees down at uh, water level, goes up over the first 40 feet to around uh, 16 degrees Celsius, and then uh, rises fairly rapidly. So this is, uh, this is a fairly big kind of temperature inversion. The water is very, very cold, and then we have warmer air above it, and then it gets uh, progressively less warm until it starts cooling down. Uh, and this view here at the top is very similar to our side view from the tank with the uh, the laser beams. You see the, the source here, which is the camera or the laser, depending on which way you're thinking of it, and these beams coming out. And you see the ones that are lower down are bent ever so slightly. It's kind of difficult to see in this. If you stretch it this way, you can see it a little bit better that they are actually bending down. This is the curve of the Earth. It's obviously greatly exaggerated here because this is over about... Uh, 30 something miles I believe, let's see, 32 miles, yeah. Okay, so what we can do now is we can move our viewpoint down. This is our viewpoint here, we are at uh, 80 feet above the ground, right here, and this is the CN Tower over here, like 1800 feet to the top. And if I move the viewpoint down, you will see that the scene changes in a very similar way to how it changes in our aquarium. So we're starting up at 80 feet and uh, the city looks more or less normal and then we go down 
to all the way down to 0 0.1 feet. So we're actually nearly nearly at sea level, and yet we can still see things right at the bottom. And what's happened again is everything has been compressed together here, and the curve is actually curving around. The curve of the light is curving around the Earth, and we can see this reflected in the image. Now we can go back up to uh, uh, 80 feet, and then go back down again and see the exact same effect. Now we can go even higher. Things will look even more normal. This is actually what uh, the shape of the building in Toronto actually is. Uh, from 80 feet, it's actually a little bit compressed, but when you go all the way down, it's obviously very, very, very compressed. So you can play around with this. This is the Metabunk Refraction Simulator, metabunk.org slash refraction. And there's a bunch of other things that uh, you can look at, a bunch of presets. Uh, there's things like uh, mirages, there's various different cities. This is Chicago. We can uh, see what effect temperature has on whether we uh, see Chicago over the lake. Uh, there is uh, Chicago from different positions. Uh, Chicago showing, showing mirages. There's views of Brighton, there's views of Blackpool from various locations. And there's some classic uh, experiments uh, for old refraction simulations. And uh, it's very configurable. Have a read of the thread, which you can find by clicking um, this, uh, this link down here. Hi, I'm Mick West. And if you like that video, you might also like my book, Escaping the Rabbit Hole, How to Debunk Conspiracy Theories Using Facts, Logic, and Respect. Escaping the Rabbit Hole is a guide to helping friends, family, and loved ones who have been sucked into conspiracy theories like 9-11 or chemtrails. I explain why people fall for these theories and how you can understand them and how you can help them. It's available in hardcover, ebook, and audiobook. Check it out.